Kazapula and welcome to another episode of Parentology. Today we are going to continue um, our talk on childbirth and with me I have Dr. Julia Just visiting Bhutan currently but she's visited Bhutan for the last 26 years. Doctor, could you please tell us about yourself a little? I became interested in natural childbirth, I think at a very young age because I was uh, fascinated with babies. And um, I studied midwifery and delivered mainly babies at home after my training because I believe that childbirth is a sacrament. It's something very sacred and it needs to be preserved. And it's very hard in a hospital setting to have a woman at her most ease and a couple at their most union when there's bright lights and strange people and strange smells. So I preferred to deliver babies at home. And I must say that there's quite, since the 60s, there's quite a re renaissance in uh, the West for people to deliver their babies at home in a very protective environment. You were a midwife before and now you have studied medicine to be a doctor, but um, Dr. Julia is a different kind of doctor than the doctors we have here in our hospitals. I'm a naturopathic doctor. I'm actually an MDMA, which means Medical Doctor Medicina Alternative, which translates into a naturopathic doctor. And we just use natural methods. So we believe the body has innate intelligence to heal itself. And we heal mainly through herbs, homeopathy, lifestyle changes, diet, uh, exercise, and just taking what's natural for the body for it to heal itself. You have been a huge supporter of delivering babies naturally. Why so? Well, it's like this. When I was studying, I didn't see very many natural childbirths, and I thought, this can't be right. This Something is wrong in this picture that I saw in the hospital where there was a lot of episiotomies, unnecessary cesarean sections, women laying on their back to deliver babies, and I just knew that this was not right. So I went to the States and studied, and then I wrote a book, um, and that book translates to the Handbook for Expecting Mothers and Fathers. It came out in German, mm -hmm. and I wrote that book 35 years ago. My children are 30 and 33 years old, which I delivered at home and had very natural, easy childbirth um, at home with them. And now I'm writing a book called Preparing for Conscious Conception because I realize that this is no longer the world we lived in 35 years ago. So 35 years ago I was writing the book, I was teaching childbirth education classes about how to, be, how to care for yourself during pregnancy, the delivery and postpartum. And now I realize that that's not enough. We need to start preparing our bodies at least six months before we decide to conceive because we don't live in the same world. Mm -hmm. There's so many babies being born that are quite ill. I mean, 35 years ago, no one even heard the word autism. There was one in 10,000 babies that became autistic. Now it's one in 36 in the Western world. And they predicted in the, by the next five, six years, it's going to be like one in five. So it's like it's increasing. So something is wrong with the way we're conceiving our babies because we're not healthy vessels to start a new life. Mm -hmm. So I think that parents need to prepare their bodies, not only on a physical level, but also on a spiritual and mindful level that they can um, welcome a new soul in there. And the reason we're seeing that is that in the late 90s, they started a project called the Human Longevity Project. And they started to look into the human genes. So they wanted to study that and thought, well, if they could just find the genetic that was defective, then they could kill all diseases. But what they found out is that we human beings only have 22 to 23,000 genes in our chromosomes, whereas a rice plant has 40,000, an earthworm has 26 to 28,000. So basically we are not so much DNA as we are microbes. And so we are microbes on our bodies and microbes in our body. In other words, we are bacteria. And so now they've named this the microbiome. So the microbiome are these bacteria. And it's this communication between our gut and our brain, our Intestinal lining is completely covered with nerve endings that are then go to the brain through the vagus nerve and communicate. Even in embryology, when we study, we know that the same cell 
that forms the brain, forms the gut. So it splits and it forms neurons and bacteria in the gut. So there's a huge brain-gut connection. So when our gut is not working, we are, it is the cause, root cause of all disease. As the father of medicine said thousands of years ago, Hippocrates said, all disease begins in the gut. He also said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And so we get our microbes and we get our bacteria in communication that we take in that is feeding our bacteria inside of us. And this is what's wrong. I mean, it's so many young people already today have foggy brains, they're exhausted, they have frequent headaches, they have constipation, they have diarrhea, they have autoimmune diseases, they have thyroid disease, they have skin rashes. All of this is coming from this microbiome or our gut. Mm -hmm. So it's important to help to heal, heal this before we even get pregnant. And what disturbs it are genetically modified foods, um, a lot of pesticides and fertilizers on our foods, the contraceptive field, too much alcohol, stress. Uh, the misuse of antibiotics is a huge one mm -hmm. when people take too much antibiotics. And then a baby being born through a C-section has already come into the world with a very, very weak microbiome because a newborn infant's digestive tract is inoculated through the bacteria in the woman's birthing canal. Mm -hmm. Could you explain uh, to us in depth about how a baby um, comes in contact with the healthy flora in the mother's birth canal? Well, first of all, during her pregnancy. If it's not, if her pregnancy, if she's got diarrhea and all the things I just mentioned, then she doesn't have a healthy micro, microbiome to begin with. And then the baby is only inoculated as it passes through the birth canal. It gets these bacteria in its face, its mouth, its eyes, saying, that inoculate and start the digestive tract going. So a mother that's given cesarean section, her baby starts out with a very weak microbiome. But there are ways now, we know Harvard uh, has done research to say that if we put gauze in the passageway of the birth canal, while a baby is having a cesarean, we can take that gauze out post-birth and rub that in the baby's face and it will then be inoculated. Talking about conscious, uh conception. I know that you're writing a whole book on it, but if you could give some tips to our mothers who are actually watching the show right now as to how to prepare the vessel to conceive. So first of all, look at your health issues. Like first of all, figure out if you've got digestive issues or your, all the things I mentioned, eczema or, or foggy brain and things, and then work on your health. That means changing your diet and, and exercise, you know, looking into those things. And most often people have what they, we call leaky gut. That means they have holes in their gut and the food is undigested protein is passing into the bloodstream and causing chronic inflammation. So we have to get rid of that first. But second of all, it's like, because we're in a Buddhist country, one of the best ways to prepare yourself is to do Vajrasattva practice because Vajrasattva practice is so much about purifying yourself. And you want to make your vessel as pure as possible. And a conscious conception means that you're not getting drunk and then having having a relationship and then all of a sudden you find out you're pregnant and it's oh my goodness. Actually, three months before a woman conceives, it's the egg that she produced three months before. So if you were heavily drinking or very depressed three months before, then that's going to affect your egg. And you want to give, every, every parent wishes for the best health for their baby. And we can only have the best health for our baby if we are, have enough knowledge, if we get information, and then we participate and we are an active participant in consciously conceiving this baby through a healthy body, a spiritual calling for these souls that are out there to come through us, this is, will give us the outcome of a fruitful wish that we have a healthy baby. Mm -hmm. So I think that you know, doing prostrations even is a good exercise of women don't walk enough. We used to walk, we walked a lot. And I understand if you're on the farm, you're probably getting enough exercise, but the women that are living in more urban developments now, they're probably not getting enough exercise. Mm -hmm. And exercise is equally as important as the food or your spiritual practices. The fact is that there are babies who are conceived uh, without having being planned. How do the, those mothers cope up with 
I think that from the moment they know they're pregnant, from that moment on, you have to take responsibility for your health and your well-being and say like, oh, I'm a vessel for a new baby. And the more healthy you eat, the more healthy you think. And your thoughts are so important. So if you have a healthy micro, microbiome, then you're also going to have healthy mind. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have enough bacteria, then it causes anxiety, depression, you know, sadness. So it's very important that you feed yourself well. And I think that prenatal care and childbirth education classes are very crucial to any woman having a baby. So maybe you, it's, it is an unplanned parent. Uh, you know, you don't, didn't plan to be parents, but it doesn't have to be the perfect moment to be a parent. It's just embracing that. And if you do childbirth education classes, it gives you the opportunity to meet other couples around your age that are going through the similar experience. And maybe they also didn't have planned parents uh, to be pregnant, but it's, it's something you can share. It's more of a community. And I think it's very important that women learn how to breathe and how to do yoga and things because when you give birth, it is a sacrament. And the more introspective you can be and the more control you are of your body because you have knowledge that you know how to control your body and what's going on. Because each stage of labor and each stage of pregnancy brings on new complications and new things. And if you are aware of what's going on, then you have no fear. Mm -hmm. Because what we don't know, the unknown, as human beings, makes us very afraid. It's a new concept, especially for, uh, for me, and I have actually very rarely seen the combination of spirituality and uh, um, pregnancy. In all honesty, having grown in a Buddhist country, I have barely heard any conversation or any talk that says, oh, being pregnant or childbirth is sacred. And I, that's why I'm intrigued. Explain to me how spirituality and pregnancy or childbirth comes together. Well, thousands of years ago, before we had civilization, before we came together as communities, there was a, what was, we are as known, now known by anthropologists as a goddess culture. So that meant that the oldest artifacts and the oldest art that they found, like some old art that we have here from, this is from South America, it venerated, it honored the woman as a sacred vessel because it was a giver of life. And that's how we've continued to come on this planet. If the women were not here, we would no, have no more life. So they revered the earth and they called the earth Gaia or mother. And so the earth is our mother that provides for us our nourishment to sustain us on this planet. And then we become a vessel of taking in her nourishment to give life. So it's always been considered since thousands and thousands of years that it is a sacred time. And we know, and my experience of helping women to give birth is that women that are very prepared for birth, they're almost silent in their birth, like because they go inside and they realize that that, as Buddhists refer to as that inner channel, it's actually opened at childbirth. It's completely open. So a woman is a sacred vessel because she's so connected and she could receive divine grace, so to speak, when she's uh, giving birth. You keep mentioning how prenatal care is important. And as soon as I hear uh, the word prenatal, the word um, prenatal vitamin comes to my mind. Definitely necessary. Mm -hmm. Prenatal vitamins are definitely necessary, as I mentioned, that agriculture has such a big